संधान ऑल गुजरात इंटीग्रेटेड क्लासरूम सैटेलाइट ना माध्यम थी जोड़ती कड़ी इतले संधान वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू टुडे वी विल स्टडी समथिंग अबाउट अप्लाइड साइकोलॉजी बिफोर गेटिंग इनटू अप्लाइड साइकोलॉजी लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज साइकोलॉजी साइकोलॉजी जनरली मीनिंग इज दैट द स्टडी ऑफ माइंड और द स्टडी ऑफ बिहेवियर ऑफ ह्यूमन साइकोलॉजी हैज टू फैक्ट्स दैट इज बाई बेसिक साइकोलॉजी एंड अप्लाइड साइकोलॉजी लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड द इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट द बेसिक साइकोलॉजी बेसिक साइकोलॉजी मेनली कंटेन्स ऑल दोज थिंग्स दैट इज कॉग्नेटिव साइकोमोटर एंड एफेक्टिव वाइल अप्लाइड साइकोलॉजी कैरियज ऑल सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग्स दैट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द ह्यूमन बिहेवियर इन शॉर्ट वी कैन से दैट द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ द साइकोलॉजिकल प्रोफिशंसी टू सॉल्व द ह्यूमन प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ ह्यूमन बिहेवियर फॉर दैट इफ साइकोलॉजी इज द बिग अम्ब्रेला ऑफ रिसर्च Uh, research addressing human behavior and mental processes or functions then applied psychology is smaller subcategory under the big umbrella and different from the basic psychology the basic psychology includes abnormal cognitive neuropsychology personality positive and social psychology whereas applied psychology includes clinical educational forensic health human factors that is engineering industrial organizational occupational health school and sport psychology it can be psychology applied to business the law product design management mental health etc so we can say that applied psychology is something that is related to professional expertise of applying psychology to solve the problems of human behavior now you can see that there are two basic things are given basic psychology and applied psychology whereas basic psychology considers abnormal behavioral neuroscience cognitive developmental experimental evolutionary mathematical neuropsychology personality positive psychology psycho uh, psychophilia then social whereas applied psychology you can see clinical educational forensic health human factors that is engineering and economics industrial and organizational occupational health school and sports now when we go for history of applied psychology we can see that the founder of this applied psychology was hugo minsterberg he moved to germany in 19th century he originally studied philosophy he started with writing magazine articles discussing number 1 legal aspects of testimony confessions courtroom procedures later he wrote a book called on the witness stand we have already discussed the definition but in detail the prescribed standard format of applied psychology definition is that applied psychology the use of methods and findings of scientific psychology to solve practical problems of human and animal behavior and experience a more precise definition is impossible because the activities of applied psychology range from laboratory experimentation through field studies to direct services for troubled persons nature of applied psychology the nature of the problems that require a solution the target population who normally serves as clients the competency required to develop and evaluate solutions to problems the unique combination of these factors comes under the nature of applied psychology now when we come about the fields of applied psychology nowadays you can see that advertising there is also psychological tactics used to enhance or to get the information about the consumer psychology about certain products so it can also come under advertising business advertisers have long consulted psychologist in assessing what types of messages will most effectively induce a person to buy a particular product their research includes the study of unconscious influences and brand loyalty the study of consumer behavior which helps in enhancing the product quality and viability so in advertising field also the consumer behavior is understood and then they launch their brands they understand the quality 
and enhance the quality of that particular brand and that is also one type of applied psychology to understand the consumer behavior. Now what is clinical psychology? Clinical psychology includes the study and application of psychology for the purpose of understanding, preventing and relieving psychologically based distress or die function and to promote subjective well-being and personal, personal development. Some clinical psychologists may focus on the clinical management of patients with brain injury. This area is known as clinical neuropsychology. In many countries, clinical psychology is a regulated mental health profession. The work performed by clinical psychologists tend to be done inside various therapy models, all of which involve a formal relationship between professional and client, usually an individual, couple, family or small group that employs a set of procedures intended to form a therapeutic alliance, explore the nature of psychological problems and encourage new ways of thinking, feeling or behavior. The four major perspectives are psychodynamic, cognitive, behavioral, existential, humanistic and system of or family therapy. So that comes under clinical psychology that which needs uh, to study the behavior of certain problems like uh, the psychodynamic cognitive behavioral problems all these under all these studies comes under clinical psychology number 3 is a counseling psychology counseling psychology is an applied specialization within psychology that involves both research and practice in a number of different areas of domains. These include a focus on an individual strengths, relationships, their educational and career development as well as focus on normal personalities. Counseling psychologists help people improve their well-being, reduce and manage stress and improve overall functioning in their lives. There is a guiding philosophy which places a value on individual differences and emphasizes on prevention, development and adjustment across the lifespan. You can see nowadays as soon as the results are declared, parents and children are equally worried about their future. So what happens? Uh, they consult certain, uh, certain experts to understand for which direction their children should be directed. So this type of psychology is known as counseling psychology. In most of the school you can see there are guidance and counseling centers for students, not for slow learners, for average learners and for gifted children as well. So that they can channelize their potentiality to the right area or the right direction. So this thing comes under counseling psychology. It helps the children's upgrowth towards the direction that enhances their things in a particular way. Counseling also helps to guide the student to channelize the things properly. So for this reason, many schools have counselors and uh, guidance centers also. Let us see the next thing. Number four is educational psychology. Now in educational psychology, there are three things involved. The learner, the learning situation and the learning environment. The behavior that occurs in this learning environment affected by the learner or the learning pattern comes under educational psychology. Educational psychology is devoted to the study of how human learn in an educational setting, especially schools. Psychologists assess the effect of specific educational interventions, for an example, phonics versus whole language instruction in early reading attainment. They also study the question of why learning occurs differently in different situations. Another domain of educational psychology is the psychology of teaching. In some colleges, educational psychology courses are called the psychology of learning and teaching. Educational psychology derives a great deal from basic science disciplines within psychology including cognitive science and behaviorally oriented research on learning. Educational psychology helps in 
uh, understanding the individual differences of the learner and thereby teach the students in that particular manner. As in educational psychology, it is said there are three domains, namely, number one is a cognitive domain, psychomotor domain and affective domain. Intellectual is a cognitive domain, a psychomotor where we use the psychology and the physical as well as the mental activity which contains three hands that is head, heart and hand. Okay, And in affective domain, it is totally about the emotional perspective. Now, educational psychology directs the methods of teaching, how a teacher should take a teaching pattern in the class, how the students can be motivated to learn. These are the specific things that are taught in educational psychology, mainly concentrated on the learner and the learning environment and the learning styles. There are different learning theories involved in educational psychology. Number five is environmental psychology. Environmental psychology is a psychological study of humans and their interaction with their environment. The type of environment studied are limitless, ranging from homes, offices, classrooms, factories, nature and so on. However, across these different environments, there are several common themes of study that merge within each one. Noise level, ambient temperature are clearly present in all environments and often subjects of discussion for environmental psychologists. For an example, a quiet environment is necessary for a classroom of students taking a test but would not be needed or expected on a farm full of animals. Isn't it true? The concept and trends learned through environmental psychology can be used when setting up or rearranging spaces so that the space will best perform its intended function. The top common, more well-known areas of psychology that drive this applied field include cognitive, perception, learning and social psychology. A environmental psychology mainly deals with the environment peripheralia where we have to understand the environment. For an example, the way we are sitting, the environment also plays an important part. We can't do yoga in a scorching heat, right? So the environment uh, needs to be that much efficient that uh, we can thoroughly experience the things that we are supposed to do. So environment psychology is the one of the part, leading part, where we come to know about what type of environment is suitable for a good human behavior or advanced goal setting things that comes to our zone. Six, evolutionary psychology. Evolutionary psychology is also known as EP, seeks to determine which psychological traits are evolved adaptations, that is, the functional products of natural selection or sexual selection. Some evolutionary psychologists apply the same adaptionist thinking as is applied in evolutionary biology to psychology, arguing that the mind also has a modular structure similar to that of the body. Evolutionary psychologists argue that much of human behavior is the output of psychological adaptation that have evolved over thousands of years to provide solution to recurrent human problems. The very good example of this is of our speech system. If you can see the Neanderthal man, their voice box and their construction was very much different. They were not very acquainted with the language fo uh, format. But slowly and slowly as the human uh, uh, features were advanced, it was known that we can produce sound, we can produce language which are meaningful and which can connect to each other. So that type of physical modulation as well as a mental modulation helps in understanding the language system, the communication system. So this is one of the example of evolutionary psychology. Nowadays that which is very much trending in psychology, applied psychology is the forcenic psychology and legal psychology. You can see in many of the cases how forcenic psychology and legal psychology helps in understanding the criminal's behavior or in understanding the interrogational behavior of a criminal. All this come under forcenic psychology and legal psychology. Now what is forcenic psychology? Forcenic psychology involves a clinical analysis of particular individual 
and an assessment of some specific psycholegal questions. The psycholegal question does not have to be criminal in nature. In fact, the forensic psychology rarely gets involved in the actual criminal investigation. The validity and upholding of eyewitness testimony is an area of forensic psychology. Thus, does veer closer to criminal investigation through does not directly involve the psychologist in the investigation process. Psychologists are often called to testify as expert witness on issues such as the accuracy of memory. That means a criminal changing his statements. The how much his good is in his memory or how much time he has uh, changed his uh, statements. So this is also one type of forensic psychology where the uh, person comes to know, the psychologist comes to know the behavior, the mindset of the criminal. The reliability of police interrogation. You have seen that many cases the, the police interrogation, maybe the person has said some other statements and during the courtroom session the person has changed his statements. So this is also a study of matter which comes under forsonic psychology. And things like where uh, wavering statements, like statements that, that keeps on changing, that is also one type of study comes under forsonic psychology. Let us see further in legal psychology. What is legal psychology? Legal psychology refers to any application of psychological principles, methods or understanding to legal questions or issues. In addition to the applied practicals, legal psychology also includes academic of empirical research on topics involving the relationship of law to human mental processes and behavior. It is interesting to note the inherent differences that arise when placing psychology in the legal context. Now let us see the next. Nowadays we are all health conscious because health is wealth, right? Now the entire physical health and mental health are like attached to each other. If we have a very good health, very good sound mental health, then only we can move on in our life very nicely. So now, nowadays health psychology